Hi folks, <clears throat> welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. I'm making this video here to be just kind of an introductory um, video on how to solve second order differential equations. So <clears throat> the main video here, we're gonna be talking about this one right here, uh, d squared y dx squared plus four times y equals zero. But before we do that, we're gonna chat about this one here first d squared y dx squared plus y equals zero. And what you need to do is you need to learn to think about this in terms of operators and in terms of functions. So in this equation, right, the solution is y, which is some function of x. <clears throat> and this equation is saying that whatever y is, we can hit it with two x derivatives, add it to itself, and get zero out. So ask yourself, you know, what type of function exhibits that behavior? Well, there's only <clears throat> really two functions in the entire universe that exhibit that behavior, and those are the sine and cosine functions. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pick one here. y equals sine x. Okay. If we take the, the uh, derivative of that, right, y prime would equal cosine x, and y double prime would be equal to minus sine x. And again, notice that if we take y double prime, right, that's what this is, and we add it to y, we get zero, okay? So one solution to that equation is y equals sine x. Now, if I try the same thing with y equals cosine x, you're going to get something that solves it as well. I'll, let, I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader. Now, <clears throat> some other types of uh, functions here. Well, <clears throat> if we tried y equals 2 sine x, right, it turns out that will solve it, or y equals cosine of 2x. Right? Getting a little bit more general here. If I tried y equals sine of 2x, it turns out that you can get that to work as well. So kind of in general here, if I take y equals a sine of bx, where a and b are constants, you can get it to solve that equation. Furthermore, if we take y equals, I'm going to use c cosine of dx, you can also get that to work. Now, there is a theorem in differential equation theory that says this, right? If you have two functions, let's say y1 and y2, that both solve it, those, <clears throat> then the sum of the two also solves it, and that's called your general solution. Now, I wrote this a, b, c, and d because these are all um, potential constants, but it turns out, for reasons that will become clear when we do more examples, that the b and the d turn out to be the same constant, right? Which is why I wrote this here, y equals a sine of bx plus c cosine of bx. That's called the general solution. That is the general solution for equations that have this mathematical form, all right? So let's take a look at another example here. Here's an equation that has that same type of form. Whatever y is, if you hit it with two derivatives, add it to itself, or at least a multiple of itself, you get zero. Okay, Any equation that has that form has this for a general solution. Now, <clears throat> it turns out that sometimes you need the sine function, sometimes you need the cosine function, sometimes you need both of them. When a problem doesn't have what are called initial conditions, initial conditions look like this, like y of 0 equals a number, or usually 0 or sometimes some value, or y prime of 0 equals some number. Right? If you don't have initial conditions, then either of these will work fine. So I'm going to take the sine function, y equals a sine of bx. And the way you solve the equation is you take your function and you sub it into the equation to A, see if it works, and B, see if you can determine what these constants are. So if we take the first derivative of this, we're going to get 
a b cosine of bx, right? Because the derivative of the sine is cosine. And if we take the second derivative, we're going to get minus a b squared sine of bx, right? And that's because the derivative of cosine is minus sine. But you have to chain rule it. Don't forget to differentiate the inside function. That's why the b became a b squared. So now when we sub this and this into our original equation, right, it's going to read minus a b squared sine of bx plus 4 times y. Now y itself is a sine of bx equals 0. Okay, now we just do a little bit of factoring. Let's see, we can factor out a a and a sine of bx. And then we're left with minus b squared plus 4 equals 0. All right? Now, when we look at this equation, there are three possibilities. Possibility number one, perhaps a is equal to 0. But a cannot be allowed to be 0 because this is our solution. And if you put y or a equals 0 in, our solution reads y equals 0. Now, interestingly enough, that actually does solve our original equation. I'll let, leave that for you to try and see. But that's not what we mean. That's called a trivial solution. Right? Furthermore, you can't really, you know, like sine of bx will only be 0 at certain values of x. So then we're left with the third thing. Now, if we solve this, we get b equals plus or minus 2. So it kind of looks like we have two values here, but we really don't. Because if I were to take, compare, say, sine of x and sine of minus x, they only differ by a minus sign. And that is taken into account with the different values of this constant here. So long story short, <clears throat> um, we're just going to take b equals 2. So our solution of this equation is y equals a sine of 2x. Now, next question is, what about a? Well, there's not enough information in this example that I've made up to give the value for a. You would need an initial condition of the problem to do that. So this video is meant to be just kind of an introductory video. I'll go ahead and make another one with more specific examples. So I hope that this helps. Have a great day.